Okay, this is Jack's roadmap to success. Jack is right off camera over there because it's about to be dinner time for him. So his, his mom is ficking, ficking him some vittles. Now, Jack being an emotional support animal, um, his guardian has done a really good job of teaching and training him. And he has a, a nice repo, uh, rep, uh, repertoire, if I could speak properly, of stuff that he knows to do. But one of the things I recommend is that she maybe look for some different tricks to teach him. Um, for dogs, when, they're, when we're teaching them, we kind of have a little bit more of a mentor relationship with them, which helps them have a little bit more respect for us. Um, he's a great dog, but uh, I think he could work on some impulse control. Now, um, unfortunately, uh, it's the wrong season to work on the main thing that he wants to work on, uh, he needs to work on, which is chasing after motorcycles. Uh, motorcycles, bicycles, skateboards, those are things for difficult for a lot of dogs because they move by really quickly, uh, seemingly without the dog's permission. And so um, uh, if that is still the case, let me know in the spring if that's going on. We can come by and do a very short one hour session and show you how to do some counter conditioning and make him hear the sound of a motorcycle as actually a positive, kind of similar to the principle that we did in the video that's above this one, teaching him to go to a spot in the house when he hears the, the ding of the bell. Now, um, one of the things I did notice is uh, the lack of impulse control and also a little bit of, uh, sometimes the guardian needed to ask him a command multiple times before he actually did it. So one of the things I'd like the guardian to start doing is practicing what I like to call petting with a purpose. And that means usually if the dog is nudging me, before, if he's nudging me, he's telling me what to do. And, that, and if I pet him, then I'm kind of telling him, yeah, you're my boss. So what I usually say is when the dog does that, give it a counter order to tell it to sit. But I also usually also tell people that if you want to pet your dog and it comes up and you just go, you call your dog to you whenever possible. If I go to the dog, the dog's kind of in the driver's seat. If the dog, if I call the dog and it comes to me, then I'm kind of in the driver's seat. So um, ask him if whenever possible, come to you and then tell him to sit but only tell him once. Dogs have something called learned irrelevance. If we say the same command over and over again, it also helps them practice not listening to us and also makes it less of a prominent cue. So basically you tell him, uh, sit. If he sits in that two second window, then you would mark it. Now we talked also about using a marker word. You wanna pick one word, not good boy, but just the word good or yes or nice, or some people actually say thanks. And that's really what we're doing is we're thanking the dog for doing the thing that we wanted. So we use a marker word during training. So if I'm trying to lure a puppy, uh, it doesn't know how to sit yet. Because if I could say sit, it doesn't know what sit means because it doesn't speak English. So if this is the puppy's head and this is its butt, I would hold a treat here and kind of lure it up. And have, after a while, to get more elevation, it puts its butt down. As soon as its butt hits the ground, I would say yes, and then put the treat in his mouth. Or in his words, good. So good means you did the thing that I wanted you to do. So I'd like the guardian to start marking the things that he does when he does them on his own. Now, when you're training him, you can do this as well. But let's say you're just sitting here watching TV and he's walking towards you. You know he's coming to you. When he gets to you, say good and then pet him. So what you're saying is arriving here with me, that's a good thing, literally and figuratively. Um, and then I'm going to give you attention immediately after. So after you mark it, he needs to get a reward after that. So every time he's about to sit or every time he sits, say good and then pet him. Every time he lays down, good and pet him. Um, when he eats his food, you could say good. Um, you don't really need to because good the food is, is kind of the reinforcer. Um, now, that's a training method. We use the marker word to communicate what I wanted. Eventually, we want to transition from a marker word to a cue or what a lot of people call as a command word. Now, uh, for feeding him, you could easily incorporate one of these. You don't want to transition to a cue until you're 90% certain that the dog is going to do the activity. That's why in the video above, I wasn't, uh, we were ringing the bell after the dog uh, got there, but I was throwing the treat as a lure to get the dog to go to the place, then we were ringing the bell. So what I like that, it, uh, so if the guardian wants to come, uh, come up with a word, I say lasagna for one of my dogs, actually this dog right here, his name is Max. So his word is lasagna. When I want Max to eat, Max is sitting outside the, uh, away from his bowl. I put all his food in his bowl, I put the bowl down. And then when it's time for him to eat, I say, lasagna, and he runs over and eats the food. So what you would do to, to what I, the way I taught him that is if the f bowl of food is here, I would say, Max, and tap the bowl. He came over to it, and when he's right about to start eating, I'd say, lasagna, then he starts eating. So we call that a precedent. So lasagna means I get to go and eat. So that's why uh, that, that when you're doing training, you want uh, the order that you want to use is you say the cue, the dog does the action, and then it gets a reward or a reinforcer. So you think of it as a sandwich, three slices of bread. The top slice of bread is the cue telling the dog what to do. The meat of the sandwich is the dog doing the action. And then on the last side, the dog gets a reward for doing the action. 
And that's the proper way that you want to train dogs. You use the marker word at first and get them practiced and repeat, repeating it till they're kind of on autopilot. Then when we can predict that they're about to do it, then we'd say lasagna and then the dog eats their food or ding the bell right when the dog gets uh, there and gets the treat. Um, so one of the things I'd like the guardian to do is to create a little bit more intention of wanting to listen to her is I like the, uh, the guardian to start calling him to her and when he gets to her, say, say good and pet him a little bit, then tell him to sit and he has two seconds to sit. If he sits, then she pets him under his chin, on his chest, on his shoulders, preferably, and then pets as much or as little as she wants. If he does not sit when she gives him that cue, she just goes back to you know doing art or whatever it is that she's doing, and he doesn't get the attention. He's not punished. He's not chastised. There's no. We're not saying anything negative, but he's not getting the positive thing that he wanted, that attention. After a while, he's going to start saying, man, every time she wants to pet me, she wants me to sit. And he'll start coming over and sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention. And when he does, make sure you pet him for that because that's a beautiful thing. Now he's saying, ah, I figured out. I know what you want. You want me to sit. So when he sits, then you're petting him and reinforcing him for doing that. That will make him more likely to want to come to you when you call him. Now, because his recall in the yard is one of the main issues the guardian wants to work on, I really want you to emphasize marking when he comes to you on his own. So you, uh, the guardian said that sometimes she's sitting at her table in the kitchen working and he leaves and goes, patrols the house. Every time he comes back to her, she should say, good, and then pet him. And if possible, pull out a treat and give him a treat. And then just give him one treat only. And you can use his kibble for this as well. And then wait for him to leave again. When he leaves again, good. When he gets to, and then pop that treat in his mouth. So after a while, he's like, I'm going to want to start coming to her. Then when that, that's the case, when you know he's over there, he's coming towards me, I would say, come, he gets to me, and then I give him the treat, and I drop saying the word good. Now, he probably is already at that stage anyway, so you could probably do that. But marking the word is a good way to communicate to the dog that that's what we want him to do. Um, now, for feeding him, I would prefer... We're in the dining room right now, and he's getting his food prepared in the kitchen. Sit. What I prefer the guardian to do is to teach him to stay here while she puts the food down over there. Sit. Is the food ready to go? I think in about 30 seconds. Okay, so she heated up the food, which is great for dogs. Uh, the temperature is more important than the taste. Come here, buddy. Yes. See, I had to show him that I had this treat to get him to come over here. Sit. So now I'm going to kind of elongate this because the guardian said about 30 seconds his food's going to be ready. So what she could do is toss a treat over here onto the carpet. And right before he's going to come over and get it, she could say like reservations. And then he runs back and you do this like I would do this before you're feeding him when there's no food there. And then go ahead and, and she's going to put the food down. And then basically um, uh, you can go ahead and do. What's that? Soup's on. Soup's on. There you go. Now, see, she said soup's on, but he kind of meandered in there and he was waiting. As soon as she put the bowl down, he started eating. So I'd, I, what we'd like him to do is, is come up some ways where he has to practice a little bit of self-restraint. I know I want to eat that food, but I need to wait here in the kitchen or in the dining room. So to do this, what I would do first is I would just grab uh, some of his kibble or some treats, throw a treat here. And when he comes in here to lick it up, you can say reservations. And then he's going to get the treat and he's going to go back in the kitchen, throw another treat here. You might just do this about 20 treats. And you can use the kibble for this. So after a while, you're saying reservations means come right here. And then eventually you can get to the point where you're feeding him his food, but you're telling him reservation first, then you prepare his food, and then you put his food on the floor, and then you would say lasagna or whatever I described, like I described before, by calling him over, and right before he's about to lick it up, you say soup's on, which is what she said off camera. And eventually he sits in here on the carpet in the dining room waiting to hear soup's on, and then he goes in there and eats his food. So this gives him an opportunity to practice restraining himself. He is a big dog. If he really wants to do something, he's pretty much just about anybody he's going to be with, he's going to be able to take along with him. So we need him to have his self-control right here, not right here for us. And so the more that we can create situations where he has to do something for us, the more respect he's going to have for us as, as leaders. And the more that we make him wait or do something before he gets what he wants, the more self-control he's going to get. And that's really going to be, I guess, more for waiting. So, um, like I said, I'd like you to get in a habit of asking him to do things. So before you pet him, you're going to tell him to sit. And if he sits in that two-second window, if the only time you sit, then you pet him underneath his chin. And if he doesn't sit within that two-second window, you go back to doing what you're doing. 
Remember, playing hard to get works great for dog training. I'd also like you to get in the habit of doing this at the back door. So if he wants to go out the door, he goes and scratches the door, you tell him, sit. If he sits within two seconds, then you open the door. If he doesn't sit, sit back down yourself and wait for a minute or two. Have you pause again, wait, and then go tell him to sit again. And as, he sit, as soon as he sits in that two second window, then the door opens up. Eventually he'll go sit at the door is his way of saying, I'd like to go outside, please. And when he does that, then you can go open the door because he's, he's showing you some deference and he's going and sitting down as a way of saying, I'd like to go outside. That's called manding in the dog world. We're learning to mand. Uh, but the more that you make him uh, uh, tell him to sit and he only gets rewarded if he does what you want, the more that he's likely to listen to you in other capacities as well. Now, if you have questions on the, the, the bell thing that we went over above, please let me know. Um, text me as soon as you have questions. I'm here for you, but I can only help you if you text me and let me know that you need help. Now, remember, if he does go to the point where you ding that bell uh, the thing twice, yes, or good is your word, I'm sorry. Um, so if you go ding, ding, and he kind of jumps a little bit, so then we, we <laughs> not, I did not ask for a demonstration, buddy. Um, so as soon as he does that, then you would basically back up and make the sound a little bit lighter. And then I would go back to, uh, to the, we call it priming or loading. So I would go ding and then give him a treat. Ding, but you're doing dinging it very lightly. And then I'd actually go ding, ding and give him the treat. And then ding, ding, ding and give him the treat. Because that's what we want to work up to where we can go to the door and go ding, ding, ding. And he runs in from the outside to get that treat. Uh, now, if you have questions or problems with uh, conditioning him to do that, what we went into the video above, let me know. <laughs> he just wants to get on camera. This is my buddy, Jack. Um, and eventually he'll get to the point where, again, you can make that dinging sound and he'll listen to you. But the little things you do in the house, like tell him to sit before you pet him, will go a long way towards motivating him to want to listen to you. Isn't that right, big Jack? You want to come up here one time? No. Well, this is my buddy, Jack. And this is Jack's roadmap to success. Remember, oh, there he comes. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.